I always knew he'd come back. In this town, Michael Myers is a myth. He's the boogeyman, a ghost story to scare kids, but this boogeyman is real. An evil like this never stops. It just grows older, darker, more determined. In today's video, we finally have a look at the new NECA Toys Halloween 2018 Michael Myers. It's been 40 years since Laurie Strode survived the vicious attack from crazed killer Michael Myers on Halloween night. Now she faces a terrifying showdown when Michael returns to Haddonfield, Illinois. But this time, Laurie is ready for him. This figure includes knife, hammer, fire poker, tombstone, victim head, light up pumpkin, and interchangeable head and hands. The very first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Michael Myers stands, taking the tape measure right to the very top of his hair and stopping it right there. The tape measure tells us that the figure stands at actually a rather impressive 7.6 inches in height. We'll go ahead and switch that over to centimeters. Let's go ahead and do that right now. 19.5 centimeters tall is the 2018 Michael Myers. You could say that NECA Toys certainly has packed many a treats with this inclusion of this figure. Why don't we first start by having a look at the tombstone that comes included. Now it's the Judith Myers tombstone. Sadly, a rather thin looking tombstone. It could have been maybe just a little bit thicker. And it really doesn't have much in the way of indication of kind of like stonework on the side. Some like, for example, some of the previous Judith Meyer tombstones that NECA has also released. It's clearly not a same remold. It does look like it is a brand new uh, tombstone. You've got Judith Myers there featured on the top, a beloved, our beloved daughter right above that, and some nice scroll work there on the side. Born November 10th, 1947, died October 31st, 1963. Um, it's actually smudged right around where it says 63 that it's almost hard to make it out. It kind of looks like it could be a five. Could look like it also could be about a three, but it's 1963. You can see it on the side there. Uh, overall, a neat looking tombstone. I always appreciate for the fact that NECA would include extra goodies like this. And overall, it's pretty. It's done pretty well. It doesn't have a whole lot of age to it. it doesn't have again like the like the texturing to make it look like it's stone, but still, nonetheless, it's a really neat looking inclusion. We'll put that right over there. Uh, let's have a look at the jack-o'-lantern. Yes, the heart-shaped heart, eyes, and nose jack-o'-lantern, which does have a battery light-up option. I've already taken the liberty of taking the plastic tab out. It's slotted right in there. Once I took that out, the supplied button cell batteries inside the pumpkin are more than enough to light this up. To light it, you just press the button on the top, and you can see not only does it light up the pumpkin, but it also pulsates which hopefully you can see right there, pulsating on, flickering, dimming, a really neat looking effect. Overall, the pumpkin looks pretty good. The lid is not removable. It's pressure sensitive. It's a little pressure button to turn on and off the light switch. I suppose one thing that I wish it could have been the case was had they moved the light just a little higher up. Instead of being right literally at the opening of the nose, if the light source had merely been moved up to right around there in between the eyes, it would certainly still be enough to illuminate the pumpkin and you wouldn't see the very obvious uh, LED light on the interior there. But a small, very small gripe overall, a very neat looking pumpkin. Harks a little bit back to some of the previous Michael Myers pumpkins that we also got from NECA Toys. Although the ones before required holding down 
the uh, the button on the top to light everything up here again you've got the ease of an on and off switch by the way sorry for taking so long getting this guy reviewed believe you me I was more inclined to get this guy reviewed. It was just a matter of waiting to get uh, a figure. Um, it took a little longer here, unfortunately, in Canada. Um, so that took a little bit longer, unfortunately. Moving further along, we've got, of course, the uh, the very, very creepy looking, very cool looking uh, officer that you can see, of course, has been made, made into a sort of a makeshift, very, very violent looking jack-o'-lantern. An interesting thing about this is the uh, that the gentleman that plays the officer in the film is actually special effects artist Christopher Nelson. He was one of the guys that created the, one of the guys that created special effects in the movie, and also one of the guys responsible for creating the new mask. So that's pretty cool. It's neat that they would have also given him a nod in the movie. And Neca, seeing how cool this looked in the film, recreated it in all its glorious, gruesome splendor for us to appreciate to come include with the figure. You can see how it's been ripped away. It's still got like the attached tongue on the interior. Is that where the tongue is? Apparently it is. It's been very roughly ripped away from the shoulder sockets and the neck sockets of the, the upper torso. It's been savagely just carved. You can see how it's just been ripped into the flesh there. Top of the nose is sort of gone, kind of simulating the opening there of the jack-o'-lantern. And of course the eyes and there's a little bit of like little you can see like there's line slashes and cuts that have been made into this flesh it looks fantastic could it have lit up probably not by the fact it's a really small accessory a light up function certainly would could have certainly gone a long way but i guess based on how big you can see how much wiring is involved. The light section, I guess, is fairly small, but it would be very hard to fit that in here. And being that this is also a little bit more open, I don't know how much heat this generates. LEDs generally don't generate a lot of heat, but this is a very, very small thing to cram a light source into. So I'm perfectly fine that it doesn't include that. By the way, let's not forget to turn off the pumpkin. We'll put that right over there. Other accessories he comes included with, of course, his trademark go-to staple when it comes to slashing, and that is his butcher knife. The butcher knife is so far a relatively unscathed. It has no blood on it whatsoever. They've painted some nice silver there in the handle areas in which the handle would have been riveted to the rest of the steel frame. Uh, the knife is done very nice. Again, not really a whole lot of blood. No blood actually whatsoever, but that's okay. I'm sure you can easily go in and just add a little bit if you wanted to. He also comes included with his, let me grab it here, his fire poker, which would fall into the category of most likely to break. In fact, it should have actually known that was what it said underneath its picture in the high school yearbook, most likely to break. It is of a thinner plastic, something I'm not even going to entertain the idea of bending, but you get the idea. See? Yeah pretty soft um, you can fit it into his hand you can fit it into that hand you can fit it into well not that hand we're gonna have to change out some hands in the process to get him to properly hold it nice aging and weathering added to it as well just to give it the look that it's made out of metal even though it's not and last for his bludgeoning and stabbing weapons he also comes included with his hammer now whereas the knife doesn't have any blood zero blood big old goose egg the hammer more than makes up for it. I guess when the option to hand out blood, hammer got in line, got covered in blood, and then snuck back in line and got covered with blood again. It is doused. Doused would be an excellent word to use. It is doused in blood. Nice wood grain also added to the handle portion, sort of giving it a real old look to it. I love how it's got a nice wet slick coat. The light almost does a fantastic job of dancing and frolicking off the paint here. Looks good. Probably not going to display him with it. Again, I always love that they come included with new accessories for these guys. Then you get a series of interchangeable hands. Now, I do have to come clean, and come clean is probably not the word I would want to use to describe Michael Myers' hands because they are, they are quite filthy. But of the hand variety, I do have to come clean for the fact that technically I think it was this hand that came defaulted with the figure. I pulled it out, 
regretting for the fact that I may have to do that again over this review. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But uh, this is the relaxed hand to go with that relaxed hand. He does also have, I'm going to come and grab you and possibly, possibly kill you in the process. He has that type of hand. He does also have a grabbing hand, sans le fingers. He's missing two fingers on the end there. Very, very horribly, horribly disfigured there on the end. Gruesome looking sight. You know something that NECA has perfected, it seems, is the color of blood. Remember back in the day when any toy company that did blood usually used a really bright burgundy? Now they've started to use almost kind of more like a rusted, brownish, burgundy color, and it really does show like true blood. Not that I have a lot of exposure to true blood. We'll just move along from there. And then lastly, and certainly not leastly, also comes included with another gripping hand. Almost sort of looks like that hand, but it just so happens to be on that side. And there are all your accessories. No, I, I know I didn't forget. The mask is also something that comes included with the figure. I'm just going to kind of move everything out of the way because we really want to set our sights on this fantastic looking figure. And again, my apologies, my sincere apologies. You know me, I'm a big horror guy. You know me, I'm a big Halloween guy. It took me forever to get around to finally reviewing this. Now, the figure itself does come theoretically... I say theoretically like it doesn't exist. He comes with really two variations of the head sculpt. Uh, one is a little bit cleaner. Um, it doesn't have as much, you could say it doesn't have as much of the texturing. I mean, the texturing is about the same. You could even say that it's almost identical to one another, but it looks like there's a little bit of extra wear paint added to it. I can't help but feel like this head sculpt is a little bit wider. I, I'm sure it must have simply something to do with the fact that the hair obviously is sculpted differently between the two heads. This one's slicked a little bit further down. This one's fanning sort of on the sides. Both have very visible eyes. Hopefully you can see it in there. Deep inside the recessed areas of those cutaway holes in his eyes are actually Michael Myers' real eyes. And they are slightly lifeless, but... That's really what you would want them to be. I kind of like that this one here, you almost have to look a little harder, almost having to take a double take in order to see the eyes. This one is a little bit e easier to make out the eyes. One nice little touch is that they put in, right on the side there, a little needle mark that was inflicted by Lori, featured right there on the side of the neck. Again, I really do like the head sculpts. I thought perhaps that the sculpting was a little bit too much, but now that I've seen the figures physically in hand, the head sculpts, that is, I do think that NECA really has done a great job on it. It's just a real shame. As far as I know, this is the only license that NECA was able to grab. That is the Halloween uh, 2018 license, that is. I, the chances of them being able to acquire the other license of the other Halloween films, so far I don't think has developed yet. Maybe that's something that NECA is going to surprise us with. In the meantime, there are the two variations of the heads. There's the two sides. This one is, like I said, it's a little bit more complicated with its sculpting. But they're not really that much different from one another, other than, again, the hair is a little bit more of the noticeable thing, and the paint seems a little bit whiter on this one. Not that there's a whole lot of white happening on this figure's head sculpt, because there's a lot of tarnished, kind of tanned, parchment paint colors added to Michael Myers' mask. One thing also I like is that it has the worn down uh, white portions of the neck. Of course, William Shatner. It's a shame William Shatner couldn't have made or maybe he may make a future appearance in one of the Michael one of the Halloween films let's put the head sculpt back in place I'm going to replace it with the new head sculpt because personally I like this head sculpt just a little bit more that's just that's just my preference there we go and once again just in case anybody missed it there it is right there there's the other head sculpt let me know down below which one you like. I just feel like this one captures the essence of Michael Myers. This one's very, very good, don't get me wrong. But this one doesn't have as much, from what I can see, as much of the texturing, and you don't see the eyes as much. Let's talk turkey. 
Let's talk the rest of the figure here. The figure, of course, is sporting a dark navy pair of boilers, a head-to-toe zip-up mechanic outfit made famous for all of Michael's various looks in the film. Um, it is a nice, uh, like, rubber, softer plastic overlay right here. The legs, the arms, of course, the hands and the feet are all plastic, just nothing but plastic. But here, it's a little bit softer. Now, of course, I love to play the game when we look at the figures like this is what else could this figure be? Now that we've, of course, now got ourselves a brand new mold, any company in their right mind will, of course, want to make use of the mold as much as they can. Well, of course, there is the obvious one that I'm thinking of, and that is Roy Burns, Friday 13th, Part 5, one of my personal favorite Friday 13th. I'm sure likely this is going to be the exact same boiler that they're going to use for that figure. Perfectly fine with that. This particular suit is a little fuller. Of course, Michael is much aged by this point in the this series franchise. Um, so again, he's a little, little fuller here. He's not as thin and svelte as he was perhaps in the 78 film. Um, but it does look really good. Doesn't have a whole lot of paint here. They haven't kept, they've kept it pretty simple. On the torso, like I said, the lower legs and the arms, they've really kept, kind of kept it to one color. This, back in the day, if we could jump into a time capsule, and well, imagine jumping into a time capsule, how awesome would that be? Mom, Dad, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. I'm just going to jump back in time. But back in time, they would have likely added a lot of extra blue, little highlights here. Farland Toys was notorious for this. But I like that they've kept it pretty simple. Of course, down below is his little work shoes. A slightly thicker, broader boot. He does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Doesn't really come with a display stand. Figure doesn't have really any problems standing anyways. Underneath, you can see that he's got his lighter blue shirt. This is a softer collar. I mean, really, if you bought a thousand of these... You could, I'm sure, go in and try to do some customization for these and try to make your very own Michael Myers. I hope, I hope somewhere, putting my two hands together, this is what we like to call a wish sandwich. You put your two hands together as the slices of bread, and then you make a wish. I wish we certainly can get more Michael Myers from the various Halloween franchises. Of course, it's up in the air as to whether we will get that. I think currently, right now, NECA doesn't have the licensing for the other Halloweens. They've got the 2018 license. Mezgo, I believe, has the 78 license, which would explain why we got the 112. Or it could have also fallen into like those subcategory licensing. We're not going to get too overly complicated here. Subcategory licensing where certain scale figures of a certain movie is acceptable and is open territory. Uh, personally speaking, I think this is leaps and bounds better than what we got with the Mezco release. So much so, I actually sold that figure. I never kept it in my collection because I really wasn't interested in keeping it. Just didn't like it all that much. I love this figure, though. NECA does, has done and continues to do a bang-up job in all their movie tie-in figures. And Michael Myers certainly here is no exception. Okay. Kind of talked a lot about Michael Myers. Seems almost as if this guy loves Michael... I do. I do. I interrupt my own train of thought by another train of thought. I do like Michael Myers quite a bit. Posability. You sort of have seen a lot of how this comes together. By the way, the lower half of his mask right there. We're trying to get as much extensive of a review as we possibly can. This lower half is soft plastic. Uh, the top here is interesting. It feels like it wants to be soft plastic, but then it really ends up being harder, denser plastic. Michael Myers, I'm sure, is not enjoying the fact I'm squeezing his, his face like that. But yes, the lower half of his mask is soft plastic. Just want to mention that collar is also soft plastic. So like the head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. It angles back and forth. It does basically everything Michael Myers should do, and then some. Arms hinge outward. You can rotate the arms all the way around. You can bend at the elbow, not once, not twice. Well, twice, I was going to say trice. Not once, but twice. Um, there's this new hinge mechanism that they're using for a lot of their figures, where essentially they're sculpting the middle area of where the elbow is, and then they're putting a hinge on either side of it. You sort of see it, but it's not enough to, uh, you know, be an eyesore on the figure. At the very least, you do benefit from a double hinge on the elbow. This comes in handy if he wants to stab, 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 stab. 
No waist swivel, because again, all of this is encased in softer plastic. The legs split out, they go forward, they go back, they bend at the knee, they swivel, technically all the way around, I suppose, if you wanted to. And also, of course, he's got the hinge in the foot. Let me show you. Up, down, around, around. Maybe not all the way around. We don't want to get too violently aggressive with these feet. Uh, doesn't have any ankle... Well, he does have an ankle pivot. Doesn't have any toe articulation. That's what I wanted to say. No toe articulation. I really can't think of what I would change to this figure. I mean, maybe there's a very good possibility that there are some figures just simply on the market that don't require any changing. Don't break what ain't broke. Don't fix what ain't broke. Uh, there's nothing, like I said, I would fix to this figure. He's got great head sculpts. He does come with two head sculpts. Comes loads of different accessories, loads of different weapons, tools of the trade. Yes, NECA has done a fantastic job on the 2018 Halloween Michael Myers. Well, about the only thing now we can do is wait for NECA Toys to finally release the Halloween 2018 Laurie Strode. And finally, after decades of waiting, I'll finally be able to display Michael Myers and Laurie Strode pitted against one another face to face. This will mark the first time that we would have gotten a Laurie Strode figure. And this also marks the first time we've got ourselves a fully poseable Michael Myers, at least from NECA Toys. Talking a little bit about that, yeah, it's a shame that we aren't going to be getting any more Michael Myers, although NECA could always surprise us. Judging by a success of a figure, a company, if they figure that a figure is going to sell well, and NECA, I'm sure, is waiting to see what the, the overall profits are on this Michael Myers release. Certainly, if he sells well, and he does very well for the company, NECA Toys, I'm sure, is going to be keeping their eyes very much peeled. That's very gross on the older Michael Myers Halloween franchises. And I'm sure when the licensing frees up for those, they're going to definitely want to release figures of it. But in the meantime, we sort of just have to wait. We have to wait for Lori. We have to wait for licensing and licenses to free up so NECA can finally give us what we've all been asking for right from day one. I remember tweeting NECA several years back asking if we would ever get ourselves a new Michael Myers, to which they said, no. Look how time has progressed. Now look at what we're looking at in this video. Slightly later, I unfortunately have to admit, but still a fantastic looking Michael Myers. I gravitate a little bit more, I think, towards the second head sculpt more than the first. He does have all the accessories I would have hoped that this Michael could have come with. And if you're a good customizer, I suppose in the meantime, while you're waiting anxiously, patiently, I would hope, for future Myers releases from NECA Toys, I suppose you could very easily buy this figure in bulk and just customize the head sculpt until you get the desired look that you want. I'm not nearly the artist that I would want to be, and unfortunately I'm probably not going to try that myself, but the option is certainly there. And while we're talking certainly about the mold, let's not forget the fact that this mold will lend itself very nicely towards getting ourselves the Roy Burns, which is something also I've been waiting for for many, many years to happen. Today we were having a look at the very impressive, this was the NECA Toys Halloween 2018, Michael Myers. I don't know if I have to say this, but I will say it anyways. This figure is highly recommended. Might be slightly biased for the fact that I love Halloween as much as I do, but I think it goes without sh saying if you watch this video as well, thank you for doing that by the way, you probably already know that this is a must-have figure pickup for the new year. Speaking of new figure reviews, and new figures from NECA Toys. There's gonna to be a whole ton of new reviews coming your way on this channel. Gonna have a whole lot of stuff planned for 2019. So make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And stay tuned, because videos on this channel are gonna be posting on a regular basis. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.